we're back here for you. Yes, Michael told something this morning. You saw, you saw a video of a monk that... He was talking about uh, five elements to upgrade your morning rituals. And one component that he said, it was a, a monk from Thailand. And he said one thing that, um, one thing to add is an act of generosity. And it just reminded me that why we're here, why you and I are here, yes. why we're doing these broadcasts, one big reason we're doing these broadcasts is because we're reaching out to our, especially our younger brothers out there. Mm. And um, the things that I believe make the biggest difference, the most lasting difference, that give you reason to live, reason to be alive. You know, it's not money or happiness, but it's things like uh, belonging to a people, to a community. It's brotherhood, it's elderhood, it's honor. These kind of things are sacred gifts that no amount of money can buy. Mm. And so I really like thinking about these, this time that we um, sit here with our brothers mm. via this Facebook Live, this podcast. Um, yeah, it's a gift. It's a gift to our brothers out there. Yeah, I wanted to, I, that feels really good to, uh, to be here, give an opportunity to be here with you like elders, like brothers, just sit with you and explore, tell stories, give an opportunity for you to reach out if you want to ask questions. As, and, if, uh, as if around the campfire at night yeah. or as if yes. around the, the breakfast yes. table with a, a coffee in the morning. Yes. We're here for you. That feels. I, I want it to be that way. I want to. I am. I am here for you guys. And uh, yeah, if you have questions, if you want to make a contribution, reach out. You know, we're gonna be here every morning, and whenever you want, you're welcome. So we won't be here every morning, but uh, yes, it should be five, a good five mornings a week. Yes. So. Today, well, we were talking also before about like how this might be perceived by these brothers, by these younger men watching these things. And uh, yeah, maybe some of you are wondering or really like more startled than anything else about or puzzled about what we're talking about when we're talking about honor, you know, when we're talking about brotherhood, when we're talking about elderhood or why yeah like it may sound like rather distant far from your bed Did they say that in English it's far from no. my bed okay it means it's not close to home it, it doesn't really relate to me or not top of mind like yeah. when you gotta make the money you gotta take care of this yes. you gotta do that like I have no time what are you talking about honor brotherhood being an elderhood elder. I gotta make money I gotta take care of my crying kids yes. I gotta Go to work. I gotta deal with my boss. I gotta bring my car in because it's broken down. You know, I this gotta is, talk with a, my neighbors. This conversation this morning is really, really important. Yes. Yeah. So it may sound very distant. All these topics, and there's a very good reason for it. There's a very good reason that you may not relate instantly to these topics and you got nothing more than like a nagging kind of sense that it may matter there's a good reason and and the the reason why we tend to be so preoccupied by all the things that we got to do that have nothing to do with those things mm -hmm. is because we've been left behind in a way mm -hmm. we've been forgotten by our people in a way you know a lot of times when i talk to i talk in these terms of who are your people or who are you for your people? Um, very powerful questions that can, can invoke great honor. Um, a lot of people say, a lot of people are confused, like my people, but you go back a few hundred years, everyone knows who their people are. You know, you come from this clan, you come from this place, your ancestors are from this place and a, a far greater sense of belonging and, and community is what's natural. And uh, the very reason why we're so preoccupied with our own financial status, our own happiness, 
Um, everything that we got to do, in a way, Hans, we could say it's because um, you've been forgotten by your you've people. You've been forgotten by your people. You have not been raised in a culture of, say, honor, elderhood, brotherhood. You've not been given a brotherhood to just walk into. You've not been parented by an elder. You know, you've not been raised steeped in honor. Mm -hmm. And so that's the reason why it doesn't really make sense. You've been trained to uh, go to school, to make a big loan, to try to pay it back working. You know, you've been raised to have a nucleus family and only that, the father, the mother and the, the <laughs> children. You know, you've been trained to be in your home, watch TV, close off your windows so no one comes in. So, and that's far away, that's the opposite almost of a culture that cultivates and that trains you, that welcomes you in to brotherhood, into elderhood, into honor. Yeah, and you can get co connection and mentorship if you pay for it, and if you don't have money, just take out a loan with interest, mm. <laughs> right? Yes. And you can, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, seems, um, it seems very unnatural to me in a way. Well when, you, well, when you go into the natural, like we're trying to explain it, why this may sound distant, there's a heavy, heavy price that you pay for it when you're, you know, when you, when you keep away from that culture of honor, of brotherhood, of elderhood. And I, I think in a lot of ways we chase money and happiness to make up for these holes in our heart in a way, these mm. things that are missing that, mm. that biologically, like mm. through however many years, mm. As a as a as a infant, as a boy, mm -hmm. as a young man, there's natural expectations you have of your environment uh -huh. to thrive in your environment, and and when it's not there, there's there's a deep something missing, mm -hmm. and and we don't know what it is, but hey, if we maybe if we buy a new car, we can fill this hole. Maybe if we attend another class or something, we can. Maybe if we improve ourselves, then we can finally feel better. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this way, it's a kind of rat race that we can never get out of because these things don't fill what's missing. Mm. And I think, Hans, I think there's a very powerful role to pay for a very high level of mentorship or training or, or things like this. But there's a fundamental level of being taken in by an elder, mm. brothers having your back, mm belonging to a community you know there there's there's dimensions of wealth that cannot be bought and paid for yeah. that can only be given and uh if we put time into if we put time into reclaiming this wealth yes we'll be far wealthier in in because like those two things when you see the price you pay for not having it and and the wealth you can get by 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 cultivating that I'm, I, maybe this is a discussion for a different time, but I'm wondering, like, why is that? Like, why has our culture, is there like a, is there like a real strategy behind that, you know? Because the advantages of, of being steeped in honor, having community, having brotherhood, having elderhood are so great. And from my experience, like, why would, why would, for example, why would, you don't have to answer it, I mean, but why would people in charge, say in politics, not look at it in this way and really think of like, who can I be for my people and really hold that sacred and really show up that way? Well, <clears throat> I don't know if you're assuming that the people in government have our best interests at heart, but who's easier to control the person who's well fed or the person who's uh, starving for hunger? Mm -hmm. Right, and, it, and our souls are kept starving. Our, our souls are kept hungry when we don't have these fundamental, natural components of wealth, this mm. natural, sacred wealth mm. of belonging to a community, having a people, having a role of honor for your people, having yes. brothers, having elders. So, yeah, I can see a way in like the, I think it was Caesar who said, divide and conquer, you know, divide and rule and, and it must be easier to rule over people who are watching their TV alone by themselves. 
who are not connected to brothers, who don't have the power of a community, who, who, who don't have elders to take care of them, to parent them. So yeah, I can see that that's, I can see that mechanism happening, you know. And it's a heavy price. It's a heavy price and there's a great solution to it. There's an, I'm not gonna say an easy, but it's, you know, it doesn't take much. I, I'm just, I really feel that like protecting this wealth mm -hmm. and passing it on to the next generation, this is what an elder does. Yes. This very thing, like our elders have dropped the ball, mm -hmm. you know, to the extent that they have not, not protected these gifts mm -hmm. and passed them on to us. Yes. And then we're left without this and we don't even realize that what we ought to be doing is then passing this on to the next generation. And this is where that that yes. lineage yes. breaks. Yes. But maybe that poverty is passed on. But maybe it needed a time of poverty. Maybe it needed a time of loneliness, of, of separateness, to realize how much of a gift it is to have elders, to have brotherhood, to have community. And maybe everything is perfect. And maybe everything is going perfectly. And now is the time to reclaim, not just pass it on, but reclaim those those values as honor and, and elderhood and brotherhood. And maybe it's all fucked up, and it's time to reclaim. Yes, <laughs> yes. I think which, whichever, uh, yes. whichever most inspires you to take on that mantle of uh, it's a great leadership. Time. Great time. Yes, the, uh, yes. Now is is the only time. You can't choose to do it tomorrow. What better or, time. You than can't now. choose right now to do it tomorrow or to what do it yesterday. Better place than here. You can only do it right yes. now. Yes. Yes. So in that sense, this is what we're trying to do. This is what we're doing with yes. these broadcasts too. We ain't trying. <laughs> uh, this, is what we're tr this is what we're doing with these broadcasts is, is pass, reclaim, reclaim the natural uh, and the power that is honor. Reclaim the power of brotherhood, reclaim the power of elderhood. I'm, I'm speaking from experience, you know. I know that my parents have given me life and I thank them for it, you know. This is the greatest gift. But beyond that, an alliance, a brotherhood, you know, uh, uh, elderhood, honor, they're, they're, they're the greatest gift. They're the greatest gift. They change your life in such a way that, you know, there will be a before and, a, and, a, and an after. And uh, for me, as I see it now, uh, a fantastic way to step into that is, you know, be a, or become an elder, be an ally for other men. You know, Hans, in today's world, uh, the sacred roles of men and the, the cherishing of uh, the roles of men are in many ways being lost. Mm. And uh, men are being blamed for, you know, aggression, violence, things going wrong in the world. But a man's gift like there's a gift there's a reason why men have that extra testosterone mm. you know and it has to do with our very survival mm. you know and our willingness to stand up and fight for something our willingness to protect our willingness to do what it takes mm. for our people mm. and uh it's a it's a something that no boy or young man or man should feel ashamed of or embarrassed about and that no man should allow society's shaming mm. and even the law from preventing them for, from fulfilling their role as an elder. I, I have, a, uh, have a younger sister who naturally as a mother, she would prefer, I think her sons have a little bit more time with her living at home to prepare them for that mean, cruel world out there. And uh, as an elder, my brothers and I recognize, no, you know, it's our job to go and kidnap that young man, you know, and metaphorically speaking, you know, to welcome him, to take him on adventure, to affirm to him that he has what it takes and to go before he's fully prepared. Mm. And I, I just use that as an example of, you know, the role of 
men is often not welcome and respected and honored in today's world, and as well the role of an elder. Your sister might be watching you now, even be more wary whenever you're uh, coming around that you're going to kidnap her son. You know, she should be. <laughs> she should be. But if she should worry more about her young, her son not becoming a great man who can protect and provide for his people, yes. and be an elder. You know, and and speaking of this, like let's say that my brothers and I, we do our job as elders, and and we manage to bring him kicking and screaming if need be into the raw, cruel world, and then he be, and then he comes to deeply appreciate us, and and see the value of that role. It's only if we do that that he's going to realize my younger brother's in the same spot. Mm. Who's going to do it if I don't? Yes. You know, yes. or his nephew, yes. or, or or yeah, one hundred percent. So we might be talking, we might be talking about this, you know, and people might be listening and and not connecting with it. But the real role that we could play is be an elder, and this is just one of the ways, you know, these broadcast. But there's there's a lot of other work to be done, and it's only when you experience. You know, I only can talk about what it means to be an ally because I've experienced it. I can only talk now about brotherhood and real community, not just the gathering, the real healing power of community because I've experienced it, you know? I, I can only talk about the power of an elder or a man calling you into adventure because I've experienced it, you know? I've gotten that opportunity and what it did to me. So I want to be that also for someone else, you know, because I've received it. And uh, yes, that's the main role we can play. That's the main role anyone can play, is to be an elder. And uh, we're not calling you to be an elder. I'm telling you that I'm an elder. <laughs> I'm calling him to be an elder. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, there are, uh, there are young people in your environment, in your community, mm -hmm. in your space, coming into your world, who are starving for that connection and mentorship and those sacred gifts that are not being passed on to them and uh, yeah you know some people out there would feel like well this gets done by the government you know? the government school system the government handing out charity the government doing training job training programs of some kind and uh, the problem with this is that it doesn't occur as a genuine gift you know it's if the government can give it it's because it was the money was taken from the taxpayer mm -hmm. at force and then people have jobs where they are required to do this thing it's it's seldom experienced as a gift when the government does it. The government cannot, unless perhaps it's like a voluntary local community type government, it's, it cannot replace the role of an elder. Mm. Mm. And yet we let and we delegate more and more to the government or institutions that we pay money to, to provide these yes. sacred roles you know, for example, we hand off our kids to daycare to strangers many times. We have no idea who's who's taking care of our kids. There's a there's an MMA fighter, Cain Velasquez, who's a former heavyweight champion, who his one of his children, you know, they were taking to daycare. Turns out that uh, someone in the house of the woman that was caring for the kids was sexually abusing his, I think it was his boy, his son, and um, many, many, many times. Well, and, you could... Yeah. And, let me finish my story here. And there was a hearing held for this guy, and they, they let him loose on bail, you know. And Cain, I'm not saying this is what we should do necessarily, chased him down in his truck after the after they left the courthouse and opened fire on them ended up wounding the guy's father and not the actual guy but and now he's uh 
and now he's in jail, was not given bail. But this, this, let me, I, I think this is worth speaking about because I think most people can tell that things are not just, and this is, if you look at Hollywood movies, so many of them are about vengeance because our justice system, here's another thing. Our justice system is in part taking on the role of an elder. You know, if you go to a tribal community, it's, it's the elders that sit around and they, they, you know, create some form of justice and balance in the tribe and amongst the tribes when there's conflict. Um, and, it, and it's done very differently oftentimes than how our impartial justice system by judges who have no connection to us, no love for us and our people. These are people who are doing a job. Um, I was sitting around with some Maasai elders earlier this year, and we were asking them about, you know, what happens if there's a conflict mm. between, you know, let's say a guy comes and sleeps with your wife or whatever, and you catch him, you know, like what, what happens? And um, one of the things they said is, and they're resisting this modern trend to allow the local Kenyan government to come and interfere with their affairs. And one of the things that they said is, if they go to the court system, then the one party has to pay lawyers in the court, the other party has to pay lawyers in the court, and all this money then goes out of the tribe and goes to this foreign government. I thought that was a very interesting perspective, mm -hmm. you know? And like there's a role for elders there in saying, you know, no, we're gonna resolve it amongst ourselves. And I have a sense that not only are they protect protecting the financial wealth of their people, but there's other wealth that's being protected in the meantime. Well, even in, in, the, even in the, the, the simple observation that um, given a responsibility to deal with an interaction, to arrange an interaction to a third party instead of you and the other taking care of it, you know, the third party being the government or uh, insurance, whatever that is. You know, that takes, it's, it's like an avoidance, it, and it takes away all the skill that you can learn from dealing it with each other right there and then. When we were in Oaxaca, in Mexico, I was talking to a friend and I was talking about insurance. And, and he says, yeah, we don't, in Mexico, they don't have it, you know? You have an accident, you arrange it there, you know? Because that's what you do. You find a way, you know? And whatever that is, you find a way between the, the two parties, maybe the people that are around, you know? But you don't let a government or insurance decide it for you. you know? And uh, I imagine they they do have insurance in Mexico, but maybe that's often how it's resolved, is like you're saying. Yes, and it was a, a big relief to me in a way that I yeah, you 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 thrive through your relationships, you know, and and giving authority to a third party to take care of your interaction, you know, it's not only giving the power away, but if nothing else, it it. It takes away the opportunity for you to learn those skills, you know, to get along, yeah. to resolve conflict, to be there for someone else. You know, it's like, poof, I have to deal with it, you know. Yeah, there's a lot that's lost in delegating the roles of delegating. mothers, that's what fathers, I mean. yes. uh, uh, grandparents, elders in the, in the tribe or the community. To a third party. Yeah, that doesn't give a fuck. Yes. It's disconnected. Man, it's not part was, of the community. I was, I was, I mean, we had a lot of discussions with my, uh, uh, over COVID, I know a lot of people have, you know, but I was, I was, I was talking with the girlfriend of my father, talking about the government, talking about the TV and what they're saying, and I, and I said, you know, do you really care? Do you really think that the government cares about you? Like, because that's the assumption. They're assuming TV is there for them and, and government is there for them. I said, Imagine the government, more power and you die, or less power and you live, what would they choose? You know? Not a second would they doubt, would a government doubt to get more power, you know? It's a, they don't care. It's a system and, it, and it, there's, it's... Well, yeah. the, the government is also made up of people who 
the vast majority would probably say that they care, but that's part of the, the problem. The, the <laughs> way that the the way that it works is because they don't know you yes. personally. Yes, they don't know your people. They don't take your con. They don't feel your concerns, and you know they don't. Yes, you know, that's the missing right there. You, you're a number. You're a statistic, and they're maybe trying to make a, a call for the majority. Mm. You know, if you have a small enough community. It's not majority overtakes the minority, mm. you know. Forty percent, making forty percent of your family be slaves to the sixty yeah. percent. That's not fair. That's and that's not how it's going to work. You keep <laughs> and going. it won't work that way. Yeah. And yeah, so it's it's uh, it's fascinating. So this task of reclaiming this role of yes. of elderhood is is an enormous undertaking. And it's critical now. Yes, it's critical and therefore enormous. But what I'm learning is that one, if one man picks up a, a bigger load, how much change that can make. You know, one man showing up as an elder, how much change that can make. One man, you know, starting brotherhood or being a brother, how much change that could make. You know? I, I think about, you know, we talked about like conflicts where you might need lawyers to resolve it. But then there's all the conflicts in a family that it's not going to require, like there was a conflict between, you know, in my, in, in my immediate family, like a divide. And even to this day, some of them are not talking to the other ones. Mm -hmm. If we were living together on the same land and there, and we had shared elders, that would have been resolved. You would resolve it. The elders would come together and they would help create a yes. restitution, a, a, a resolution. Yes. And this is why this my, is my, my immediate family didn't have that. Yes. You know, and uh, here we are. And then and then this trauma, this division, this abdication of responsibility then gets passed on because yes. the nieces, the nephews, the grandkids see how it's done. Then they feel alone. And then they're just out for themselves. And then when their time comes to resolve the conflict or to, to get together with the elders and resolve it, it doesn't happen. We yes. pass on this, this separateness, loneliness, so how, brokenness. So how do you, in this culture, how did you feel that call to, say, be an ally? How did you feel and answer? Why did you answer that call to honor and, say, brotherhood? Alliance, elderhood. If it's so easy not to do it, well, for a big, a big part of it is I grew up with it. I grew up uh, in a very deep and rich right, and tradition. Was, yes, with the Mormon religion and my family that goes back for many generations. So you this. could feel the loss. You could feel that loss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my yeah, when my parents divorced, my dad left home. Mm. Uh, the war in the family began. Yeah, it was. I had 14 years of the, being steeped in this amazing connection and tradition. Then all of a sudden, it's gone. Yes. And my and and my younger brothers mostly didn't have it. The one brother was 10 when my dad left home. The other one was six. And so, yeah, I could, I, I, I had it, and then I didn't have it. Yes. Yes. Know? Yes. And so, but most men either they're like me, they had it, and then they didn't have it. Or they just didn't have it. Yes. You know? And then that that rich lineage I, we don't pass it on to yeah. the younger generations, then we're more susceptible to be taken advantage of by mm. by uh, authoritarian governments, you know, by um, big corporations, mm. by banksters who would you know banksters. Loan us money at interest so that we can have what was taken from us. Yes. Yes. So. I, I this is a different thing. I, I didn't really have it, but I always felt a longing. I just feel fortunate that I've got to experience, you know, the power of honor, power of brotherhood, power of elderhood, you know. And we're here to reclaim it. We're gonna reclaim it. And uh, We are reclaiming it. We are reclaiming it. And if you want to belong to it, we're here for you. I'm here for you. Well, one of the things we're doing, Hans, is we're 
like I take this on as serious business. I'm coming back to my my honor work. There there were there were a good twelve or so issues I had with how business was being done, especially in the realm of human development. Um, back in the two thousands, and why these were all reasons why I left my work behind for about a dozen years to go and go on a sabbatical. And I was exploring new ways of living, thriving, leading, being connected. And I have, I have new insights on these 12 or so ways to redesign mm. business and events and trainings, human development that passes on the sacred wealth while at the same time doing business because um, there is a role for business, there is a role for uh, making a lot of money, there is a role for, for uh, free markets and free exchange mm -hmm. and it's a, a very valuable role. But what we've done in, in today's modern world is, is we're, we've pretty much put everything for sale, even these, this sacred wealth and uh, as a result it's, it's all being lost. Yeah, imagine renting an elder. <laughs> People do that nowadays, you know. They rent girlfriends, they rent friends in Japan. You know, everything's starting to be sold, and it's it's sad. Um, and, and many of our ideas about getting free is not needing anyone, you know, and not have anyone need you. Yes. And you can do this if you, if you make enough money, if you make fuck you money, you know, you can be, well, you can be free in this you sense. You could be free, but you would still need others. You still need others. You can't escape it. But you don't really need anyone because if you have enough money, if someone doesn't want to do something, you just pay someone else. Yes, but you realize at the end of that, you still need somebody. You still need others. You still need it. And you're... Your people many times will not be getting the example they need to yes. then be an elder for your grandchildren and for the future generations. Yeah. And you will have dropped, if you're not careful, exactly. vigilant, yeah. you will have dropped the ball on, on being an elder, which is perhaps playing the most valuable role that you could for your in, yeah. in life. And give you riches in many different ways. So what we talked about today is starting with how honor, brotherhood, elderhood may be a distant concept for you. The reason why that is so is because you're, you, it wasn't given to you. You've not been invited into brotherhood. You've not had an elder uh, taking care of you, parenting you. You've not had allies. You've not felt honor. Uh, it was not, you're not raised in that culture. Or, or maybe had it to some degree, but um, you, you've been for, you've been for, forgotten and detached so much from that natural wealth that what occurs to you as most important is yes. going out and fighting just for yourself. Yes. You know, make that money, get that happiness, get free of you know attachment. And we we talked about the price you pay for that, and you may be feeling that yearning. You know, a, a kind of like, is this it or there must be something else, you know? And it's, it's, a, it's a heavy price you pay for not being uh, raised in that, but also not answering that call, not seeking it, not seeking elderhood, brotherhood, honor. And so what we're saying here this morning um, is our gift is that we are here to reclaim it. We reclaim the, the natural wealth of all that goodness that is elderhood, that is brotherhood, that is honor. And so we'll be here uh, most of the mornings preaching, calling out to you and, uh, and being here for you. Yeah, so if you feel alone, forgotten on some level by your people, whoever that is for you. Mm -hmm. If you no longer know who your people are. What there is to do is not forget them so you can have some peace. 
No, it's to be the one who remembers, remembers, like brings your people back together. Be the one who remembers, be the elder, be the one who reclaims this lost sacred wealth. And this is a, in many ways, this is a masculine role. This is why we need men. This is why we need men with heart and with balls in today's world. Yeah. Be an elder for another man, but also be a brother. Go back for a brother, you know. Rescue your father from the under, underworld, like Jordan Peterson says, you know. Go back to your family and uh, remember them. So, all beautiful callings for the men of this world. Yeah, and, and for men who are feeling the call, we are gifting a sacred ceremony and training for men who would be elders for their people. Mm. We're doing it here in Colombia. Um, that speaks to you. If you're ready for that next level of calling, mission, um, purpose, leadership for your people, who are you gonna call? We're here. See you tomorrow. <laughs>